What you see here is a rear bearing cap, number three bearing cap for a Triumph TR4. This bearing cap is pretty heavy duty. And once it goes in it's, uh, and gets tightened down and clamped, it's a little bit pain in the rear to get out. As a matter of fact, at one point I had to kind of take a hammer to it. Don't really want to do that. So what you see attached to it is the lifting mechanism that the workshop manual calls out. And uh, really easy to make. Cost me maybe uh, you know a piece of one, one inch by quarter inch bar stock here, about uh, 12 inches long or so. And uh, $2, $3 worth of bolts from True Value. So I'll show you how to make it. So now, per the workshop manual, like I had mentioned, we're gonna take and be prepared to cut, drill holes in this to get these bolts lined in so we can get it in there and then we'll drill holes out. So the workshop manual gives you like that picture showed you. It's got uh, dimensions and all this, so I'm gonna find the exact center of this guy, mark that, and then be able to drill off of that point. We'll call the center at uh, six and a half. Make that mark. All right, it's nice and straight. Now looking at the diagram, these two holes that are gonna bolt into the block itself, or excuse me, into the bearing cap itself, are three centimeters, or one and three sixteenths inches away from the center line. So we've got a ruler here, we'll mark it one and three sixteenths. And we'll line that up to the bearing here to make sure we're not off. And that looks like that's going to be good. Use a straight edge here to bring it straight across. Check it again. All right, we want to try to get it just about right in the center. So obviously if this is an inch wide, we want it right at about the half inch mark. All right, so we'll mark some uh, divots in that. We'll go ahead and get a drill bit that's just a little bit bigger. This is a 5 16 inch bolt, so I'll find the drill bit that uh, will take that just a little bit bigger, and we'll go ahead and we'll drill these holes. All right, sorry, this is really crappy lighting over here, but trust me when I say I'm gonna drill two holes evenly spaced out to about 9 16 of an inch, I think is what I've got it on here. Uh, whichever the next uh, increment is in here after 5 16 that should be not too big that it's gonna be too sloppy, but big enough that I'll get the bolt hole and give me a little bit of room. So I'm not gonna film this for you, but that's what I'm doing. All right, so I got the holes drilled out here. I had to make them one size bigger because I didn't get them lined up right. But uh, this should work. Give me a little bit of play. All right, so that's gonna work from the center now to where the bolt holes are gonna go for the hit in the block. It's two and three quarter inches. So it's just barely on the other side of this, just on the outside of the um, the bearing cap doesn't go too far over. And then the entire bar here is supposed to only be eight inches wide, but I don't see why it can't hang over, but I might play with it a little bit. So anyway, so now, now we'll measure two and three quarter inches from the center line and mark other holes and hopefully try to get these uh, lined up a little bit better since I can't really test them because I don't have the block here. All right, so I measured two and three quarter inches from the center line and then measured in the center line of the, uh, the bar stock. So I'll go ahead, go back and drill the same exact size holes call it that, and then you gotta weld the captive nuts onto here. So we'll go ahead and get this bar stock out, get it drilled out again. Again, I won't show you that because the lighting over there is terrible. And we'll move on from there. Not, uh, not too difficult, but we'll save you from having a bang on the bearing. All right, we got those holes drilled. Unfortunately, this one uh, isn't quite centered up, but I don't think it's gonna matter again. All that's doing is hitting the block. I think as long as I clear the bearing, I'm gonna be good. The holes for the oil pan are set this way a little bit. I did check that out, either, either this, or set out towards, towards this way, so you're really not gonna run into those holes even if you drill it off. Now the next thing we gotta do is weld the captive nuts. Now the captive nuts are zinc plated, and welding zinc plated is not very fun, so I'm gonna try to uh, just use the grinding wheel on the, on the bench grinder over there just to take a couple of the, take some of that uh, zinc off of the uh, edges here so I can weld it without it spitting and popping all over the place at me and bad fumes and the whole deal. All right, that's all you need to do with that, nothing special. Now we'll go ahead, we'll screw the bolt hole in so we can get the nut lined up 
and be it nice and tight to this stuff so I can weld it. I'm going to try to get it relatively centered up in that hole. All right, so there's that. So now we'll take it over to the welder and just put a couple tacks on it. Doesn't need to be real, real tight. All right, well, I'm into work. I forgot to hit record, but uh, I got the nuts welded in by just uh, cranked it up the welder a little bit because it's thicker metal and I don't really care, but it doesn't need to be real pity. Just a couple couple spots to uh, weld those cap and nuts in. So we'll get these bolts out now and uh, maybe trim it off the edges a little bit, but that's it. That's all there is to it. All right, back with the motor now. You can see I got the bearing cap in, screwed it all the way down, tightened it. I didn't torque it, but I tightened it and then took the bolts back out and pretty much this guy is in there and you can rock it back and forth a little bit, but it's not as easy as the other two to just lift out. So that's where this tool comes in. So I'm going to just and see, like I had mentioned, I'm going to put something under here to protect the, uh, the seating surface here so I don't mar it with the, with the bolts as I tighten it down. So I'm just getting that lined up. So we'll go ahead and put something there real quick. And I actually don't have anything all that convenient. I got these plastic, plastic razor blades, so that'll work. All right, half inch, get these snugged up. Get these guys in there. All right, and if anything, everything goes to plan here, this little bearing will come up as I tighten these down. I'm gonna alternate tightening them so it comes out straight, otherwise it'll, it'll eventually bind on you. All right, so these razor blades aren't, aren't the best here, and the bearing's starting to come out a little crooked here. Oh. And I just snapped one of my snapped one of my welds. So obviously not real high quality. What was that? I don't know. It sounded like Morgan's room. Did he just lose a shelf? All right, so it's starting to come out. It's coming out a little crooked, but it's coming out. There we go, and now it's loose. Functional, obviously I, my workmanship wasn't the best, but it worked, and that's what we wanted to do. We wanted to get it out without having to smack it with a hammer or anything like that, so you notice it kind of came out crooked there, but it did come out. So I think as long as you protect the surface from getting marred, obviously plastic razor blades are not the uh, thing you want to use for that, it'll work just fine. So there you go, little tool, took uh, very little time to make. Thanks for watching. Cheers.